the benefit of using a good consumer protection attorney to help battle bad dealers. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. On today's show, we're discussing the benefit of having a good consumer protection attorney in your corner to represent you when a dealer takes advantage of you. This goes well beyond filing an FTC complaint or contacting the attorney general or getting a hold of the police. All good stuff, by the way, but getting a consumer protection attorney is legally taking the matters into your own hands. And there's simply no better example of a great consumer protection attorney than our good friend, Dan Whitney in Maryland. When you see this upcoming video from Mr. Whitney, I think you'll all agree that there are elements of the settlement Dan gets for his client that will come as a big surprise and perhaps help to motivate you to get looking at your own car contract. You might realize, hey, this has happened to me. Do I have damages coming? And probably so. Yeah. All right. This is what is known as a reaction video. And I had to say this because people who don't understand why we'd interrupt or interject our own thoughts. <laughs> well, so for those of you who didn't know, a reaction means we will pause in some key points uh, to make sure that you don't miss important points that Dan makes. We will also put a link in the description box to Dan's full video so you can go back and watch it nonstop on his channel. Sure. We do advise you to go see it and subscribe to him. Whitney LLP is his channel. When you understand how many different dealer cases he's winning court judgments or out of court settlements on, you'll realize there's hope for you too. Well, let's roll that video. Hi, this is Dan Whitney with the Whitney Law Firm in Towson, Maryland. Today, we're going to talk about the issue of a Ford dealer in Maryland that first refused to cancel a customer's warranty after he realized they had cheated him on that. And then after he brought his case to our attention, uh, we realized that they had charged him about $10,000 over the sticker price um, without any other sort of disclosure. Um, and then we took his case and ended up getting all of his money back and then some. So my name's Dan Whitney. I'm an attorney in Maryland. I handle a variety of car dealer fraud cases. 34% of car buyers back in December of 2022 paid over MSRP. So this is something for a good chunk of you to pay attention to because you'll find out Dan Whitney ends up getting that money back and you'll find out why. Let's go. Um, and today we're going to talk about a situation involving a Ford dealership selling a new uh, Mustang Mach-E in 2021. So it all comes to pass when our client is looking for a 2021 Mustang Mach-E and they're hard to find. And then he gets a call from a dealership and they say, good news, Mr. Smith, uh, come on in. We have the car here. So he comes in to look at the car and there's a window sticker and the MSRP is $49,635. And he says, okay, that sounds good. So he goes inside, they sit down with him and uh, it turns out that yes, that is the sticker price, but they're asking for $20,000 over the sticker. And he says, 20,000 is too much. I don't want to pay that. And they go back and forth and they end up getting him to agree to pay $10,000 over the sticker price. Now, the issue with that is in Maryland, dealers advertise the price of a vehicle without the intent to sell it at that price. And so our position is when there's a advertised price on the car, which could just be the window sticker, uh, or there's an advertised price online, that's the price that the dealer must honor with the exception of tax, title and registration, uh, a properly disclosed $500 dealer processing fee, um, and any sort of freight that's properly He's disclosed one as moment. well. So an issue about freight, he's talking about the destination charge. Yeah. Now that is actually included in the MSRP, and you should all know that, it's included in the MSRP. So if the dealership charges you a destination fee as a line item on your contract, that's a double dip on that fee. So do not let them get away with this. The other thing that he's talking about with Maryland law very likely applies to law in your state too. There are different laws in different states, that's true, but many states for these things on the level of consumer protection laws are quite similar. So your state likely has a very similar law that Maryland does. And so when the price is being advertised as X, that's the price with only the exception of tax title and license that you should be paying, not a market adjustment on top of that and fees and all that kind of good stuff. So, Right. I get a lot of people asking on the channel, you know, what should I pay for a new car? And I say over and over and over again, just MSRP, tax, title, and license registration. That's it. So there you heard it straight from Dan. So 
They did not disclose the price increase when they advertised the car, so it was our position that they had to give that back. But he didn't know it at the time, so he agreed. Now, what else they did, which is what led to the downfall here, is they had told him that the battery for the car, because the Mustang Mach-E is an electric car, and they had told him that the warranty that came with the vehicle was only good for one year. So um, he later found out it was good for eight years, uh, he believes. So they told him one year, and uh, they scared him into paying $6,500 for a warranty or service contract um, to help with the, the battery, should it have problems. So he buys the car, and then he gets home. And he starts to look at his paperwork, he starts to do some research, and he comes to realize that, hey, um, they lied to me, the battery is good for eight years, I paid $6,500 for this extended warranty or service contract that I don't need, I want to cancel. So canceling warranties is a huge problem, not just in Maryland, but is everywhere, because if the warranty or service contract or aftermarket part, park, uh, aftermarket part whatever it may be, is not canceled within, uh, if it's canceled within about 90 days, usually the finance manager and the dealer won't make any money. So by hook or by crook, whatever they can do, they do not want customers to cancel yep. that product within 90 days. But Mr. M Mr. Smith wanted to cancel it right away. It's called the charge so back. So he begins emailing and calling the finance manager, um, and he's not getting anywhere. They're refusing his emails. Well, they're not refusing them. They're ignoring his emails. And he finally calls the administrator who says, we haven't heard anything. So he doesn't know what to do. He hops on Google. He finds us, and uh, we take his case. And in the process of reviewing his paperwork, I say, okay, Mr. Smith, I see here that the window sticker, which he had a copy of, is you know $49,600. But here you paid 10000 over. What happened? And he tells me the story. I said, okay, well, in addition to um, them refusing to cancel your warranty, you also have a case for them failing to honor the advertised price. What do you think? And he says, okay, do your best, do what you can do. And I said, okay, sounds good. So we file a lawsuit. And what's interesting is this. Um, not only did they charge him 10000 over the sticker, not only did they refuse to cancel the $6,500 warranty that they lied uh, to get him to Just purchase. Just keeps getting better. On the buyer's order, they also charged him a, a phantom or a inexplicable $369 <laughs> charge for aftermarket Fake fees. parts. Now, in Maryland, you have to itemize and describe what you're charging a customer for. And aftermarket parts is not a legitimate description. What, what does it even mean? It has to be specific, and this was not. So we included that in the lawsuit as well. Um, and then what was very interesting in the uh, warranty, the $6,500 warranty, there was a provision in that contract that is not in every contract. And what the provision said is, if you give us notice and you, that you want to cancel, but we do not cancel this, this warranty, you get 10% every month of the balance beginning, I think it was 90 days after we get your first notice. So essentially there's contractual damages built in if the dealer refuses to cancel. I was, I've never seen this before, but this looks great. I don't think so the dealer that, read it So either. in goes uh, that aspect of damages as well. So we file the lawsuit, uh, and the uh, dealer files a motion to compel arbitration, as they often do. And in this case, there was a decent argument for it, so we ended up in arbitration, uh, which is not a problem. I've been there before. We've won plenty of arbitrations. And, um, you go into arbitration, so you want a good attorney. So as the case begins, uh, there's a little bit of back and forth with the other side. Um, and I get a phone call one day from an insurance adjuster who says, we'd like to discuss settling the case. I said, okay, well, that sounds good. Always interested in discussing a settlement. And I said, all right, here's what we need. We need the 10000 back. We need the $369 aftermarket parts phantom charge refunded. Um we need the $6,500 back, and actually right after we filed suit, um, well, not right after, but shortly thereafter, um, magically they were somehow able to process <laughs> that uh, refund, but that did not account for the 10% penalty um, that began after they didn't cancel it within that period of time. So we need the damages to get for that. To it. Uh, and of course, last but not least, attorney's fees. So he says, well, look, I don't know about all this. You know, the price increase, I don't, I don't think there's a case. But with the other stuff, we'll pay you for that. 
I said, well, are you aware of the law in Maryland? And I pointed out exactly what the law is, and I read it to him, and it, helpfully it was actually in the complaint. And he says, well, let me take a look at this. So he takes a look at it. I get a call back. Insurance adjuster gets um, schooled on the law. About a week later, and he says, okay, we agree. I read the law. I think you're right. And uh, we reached a settlement for about 99.9% .9 of what we had asked for, which awesome. that is fine. So we got the case resolved. Uh, the client got his money back from the refund. He got a he got that 10% uh, overage back. He got his um, he got the charge for the phantom parts. Got attorney's fees paid, um, and he did well. We got the case resolved. Now, what's interesting is that I think after I filed this case, I started doing some research, and I saw that Ford dealers uh, apparently Ford corporate was getting supposedly getting upset with these local franchise dealers all across the U.S. who were charging customers higher than the sticker price. And apparently Ford Corporate did not find this to be a good practice and I guess cracked down. So I guess these guys in Maryland didn't get the memo. They tried to do it anyway, uh, but it didn't work out so well. They had to give the money back and then some uh, because of the fees. So they, their, their net was, was a negative on this one. But the bottom line is this. If a dealer refuses to cancel your warranty, you have legal rights. And you should look at the contract carefully and one, see how are you going to cancel it uh, obviously just calling up and saying, I want to cancel, like Michael Scott on The Office saying, I declare bankruptcy, that's not going to work. It's got to be in writing. You got to do it in writing. And I would say follow the instructions. But usually if you email the dealership and email the administrator saying, here's my contract here, it's attached and whatever else the contract says, that gives you proof that you canceled it. And that's very important. Um, as to the false advertising as the price, if the advertised price is less than what you paid and they talked you into paying more than what was advertised and it wasn't tax, title and registration, a properly disclosed dealer processing fee, and it was something like some nonsense inspection fee, reconditioning fee, um, and any other of the numerous uh, false fees that dealers come up with, <laughs> you have legal rights. Uh, look for an attorney. If it's here in Maryland, he knows his stuff. please feel free to give me a call. Um, of course, uh, past results are not a guarantee of any future results, and all cases and settlements are different. Uh, thanks for watching. If you found this to be helpful, please uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Thanks a lot. Take care. Wasn't that an amazing display of legal professionalism by Dan Whitney and an excellent example of how savvy he is about the car business? Totally. The only additional piece of advice that I'd give you if you go to look for a good attorney like Dan in your area is to ask your attorney if they've dealt with car dealers before. As you can see from Dan's example, it really helps to know the car business. I hope all of you noticed a couple of key things that Dan got his client a refund on. Number one, the $10,000 market adjustment he paid. Even if he agreed to pay it, he got it back. Yep. Number two, the phantom fee category of $369 got that back. A $6,500 extended warranty got canceled, and he also got a 10% per month in damages for the dealer's failure to cancel the policy, the extended warranty when asked. Yep. Plus, he got attorney's fees, which is why most attorneys like Dan work on a contingency. How do you like the insurance company trying to weasel out of paying back the $10,000 in market adjustment? And Dan had to say, nope, the law <laughs> says the dealer must sell it at the advertised price. Dan was right. The insurance guy was wrong. And that happens to be true in nearly every state out there. Yeah. Hopefully Dan's excellent example helped convince you that you don't have to suffer from the wrongful actions of the last car dealer you visited. And I hope you now have the confidence to look up a good consumer protection attorney. I've recommended that to a lot of our viewers in your own state if you had a problem with a dealer and then go defend yourself. Winning a lawsuit against a dealer who mistreated you is icing on the cake. Icing on the cake. As you can also see with all the excitement coming over the all new car buying opportunity for a hassle-free way of buying cars that we shared in this show, three major reasons to wait until after June 2023 to buy a new car. That you should subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date on future THG announcements. For our newest viewers, you can also connect with the Homework Guy team on Facebook. If you want more in-depth information on car buying and what to be aware of when visiting the dealer and things to watch out for, please visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com. A lot of frequently asked questions can be answered on our website. When you get there, scroll down the main page to find tons of free downloads designed to help you get through the process of buying a car without getting ripped off. 
Lastly, if we've helped you save time and money finding a car, consider showing us some love by leaving even a small tip at one of the links you can find in the description box below. You'll also see that super thanks button just below the video. Thanks everyone. We appreciate everything you do for us. All right. If you're new here at the Homer Guy channel, as Elizabeth just reminded you, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our new car buying process. Join our fast growing group of subscribers and become a part of our YouTube family. Friends, we are comfortably beyond 401,000 subscribers right now. Thanks to another 1,000 new subscribers since our last show. An overwhelming positive response to our announcement of the soon to be here new car buyers hassle free way of car shopping. If you're one of the newest subscribers, welcome. Yep. Also, thanks to our many faithful followers for coming back and to all of our longtime subscribers out there. You guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. The homework guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. And soon enough, we'll be announcing the all-new launch of a new way of buying cars. Text or email us to these numbers or this email to get on the list to be notified when it goes live. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.